five historical fiction short stories. Each story is a hundred words created and read by John Jamar. Enjoy. Joy in the pub was loud and infectious. At the double boar, veterans from the King's service drank and swapped tales of glory and gore. A continental convert stood tall and declared, for king and empire, God be praised. And the cheers exploded and fueled more toasts, reasons to drink and fuel to forget. Benedict refilled his draft and walked back toward his empty table. His fortunes have changed, but his mother country had her son. Sliding between soldiers toward his bench, a French knife cut between ribs and pierced his heart. His slumped corpse fell onto a sticky tabletop. Patriotism and Justice In 1812, Alexander slighted the French emperor. Napoleon thought he was a friend and ally, but the slight seeded in his thoughts. After midnight, he called to Josephine, a mask behind deception, but he knew her true insight into the mysterious. In the darkness, they exchanged no greeting. He always asked with a murmur of mystery, what do the fates reveal? Concealed by a bone mask and lace veil, Josephine whispered, Russia is a mad dog, and madness must be ended, my eternal emperor. They're always wise, as it should be. We will march and teach the world respect before autumn. Tellers. If you like these short stories, please like this video, giving it a thumbs up. If you subscribe to the channel, then you won't miss the daily short stories that come out. And uh, please leave a comment. Let's engage as a community. Thank you in advance. Johnny expected to be back at the New Hampshire farm before harvest. He hoped this was his one and only glorious battle, so he had stories to tell over pints for the rest of his life. Standing in line, he listened to the commands and raised his long gun. Staring at the line of gray walking toward him, he saw fellow farmers as young or younger. He had hunted, trained, but never shot another man. He tilted high, firing over the heads, causing no harm. His mother would have been proud, but this secret he would take to the grave. War Brothers. In 1826, the former president, Thomas Jefferson, sat in his reading chair, waiting for dinner to be called, drinking his tea. Upon returning to Virginia, he had remained busy and productive. In the kitchen, Sally thought of her children as she nodded to Samuel, the main butler, and Sarai, the ancient cook. They had planned in secret with whispers. Samuel replied with his eyes. Sarai reached for the dried belladonna and yellow onions. Without glancing back at Sally, his favorite, Sarai dumped an overabundance into the stew. Samuel had already added a tiny leaf or two into the white man's tea. Monticello. Lying in Buffalo, New York, the president shallowly breathes, fighting for each inhale and dreaming of younger days of innocence. The room sits in darkness with only one candle burning and the window's curtain sealed because evil air might harm. He was going about his schedule with a thousand items on his mind when he was shot twice. Not hearing it, he felt the burn of the wounds. At the wounding, every detail was held in his senses. Time slowed. A blackbird cawed as he fell. Wordlessly, he mouths, bird, as a thin black snake slithers from his wounded abdomen. 